Hello, this is me, David Poon. I'm just testing to see if this is working. I want to get these links out to show that uh, we are here. So I'm just going to be copying the link and sharing it. Uh, one moment. Uh, please let me know if you guys are able to see me and whether or not the chat is available. We'll be trying to get these things uh, done more regularly. Uh, I'm thinking about doing the stream about four to five times a week to update people on the campaign because uh, it's going to be very complex uh, moving done, forward and we need to be able to um, actually work together. Okay, so I see someone saying thank you, Mildred, for saying that it is working. I'm glad we got that. So I invited the hotel people to join us. Uh, at least I talked to their admins, but I need to actually get it. Um, <laughs> I actually need to get it to their pages. So let me see how to share to a group. Um, okay, sharing it to hotel quarantine group. Spoke to, and I'm just, uh, forgive me, just getting this done, but it's a good way for us to get the technology running. Um, I wish I had one of those ring lights, you know, to give me a little bit of better light because I've only got this backlight from the uh, ceiling. And I think I could do a little bit more professional look. But alas, I am no professional YouTuber, nor am I a TikToker or whatnot. Um, please fill the chat with questions so we can uh, actually get into them um, during this talk, talk because we have a lot of different things that we'll have to go through. And I just want to make sure that we're as up to date as possible. Um, these lives will act as a way to um, essentially keep people updated uh, because as the campaign moves on, we need to be together and working in a very uh, organized fashion for us to succeed. So I'm just typing here into the hotel quarantine group, um, faces of advocacy are doing a live question and answer session to address questions about stopping the hotel quarantine and opening the Canadian borders safely. Whenever we're talking about this, guys, we should always make sure to mention the word safely because a lot of the initial pushback from people is that they think that we're haphazard. They think that we're not evidence-based, we're not paying attention, and these types of things are what's gonna sink us. Um, I'll get into that about the history of the campaign after I just share this with the hotel quarantine people. Um, okay, so I'm posting it here. Okay, sharing share it to one hotel quarantine group. Now I'm gonna share it to the next. Um, in the event that you see someone in your different groups struggling uh, and not entirely sure how to navigate the number of challenges, please refer them back to the face of advocacy because we've been working very hard to get people uh, to a place where we can actually help. Um, and I cannot be the, I cannot you know, be messaging everyone. The team cannot be possibly be in every single location. Uh, so if you guys see people struggling in other groups or in other areas, I beg of you to please just reach out and say, you know, Face of Advocacy um, has a letter writing campaign. We're doing a number of different things to keep people uh, safe and together and organized as we uh, try to get rid of the hotel quarantines. And these are the things that will help us grow. Uh, and we do need some ability to grow um, in order to be taken seriously moving forward with the uh, government. Okay, getting the last one here. Okay, so post it to the two hotel quarantine people. All right, so for those of us uh, who are just joining us who aren't entirely sure who the faces of advocacy are, we are a Canadian organization um, that was directly responsible for the extended family and compassionate exemptions into Canada. So what that means is before um, Face of Advocacy got involved, uh, your long-term partner, your fiance, your, your partner uh, could not come into Canada. Your adult children could not come into Canada. Your siblings could not come into Canada or your grandparents during the COVID-19 travel restrictions. Uh, after our organized <laughs> and all of your help campaign, uh, we were able to in October uh, have a particular press conference that was solely for us and announcing what became the extended family and compassion exemptions uh, due to the COVID-19 travel restrictions. This has been the first step because keeping families together has had a number of obstacles along the way. And that's why as we move forward, we need to get everybody on board together 
uh, and organized, most importantly, in order to enact change. How we did last year was through uh, letter writing campaigns. We had a uh, cross-partisan with all major political parties virtual rally. We ran uh, interviews with uh, with political figures, with high level uh, um, uh, people who were affected by the travel restrictions and then had a huge media and social media blitz. That's all I'm, tr all I'm trying to say is, if you believe that your voice uh, is small, and if you believe that you have no impact, I guarantee you, you have a significant impact. And that's what the face of advocacy is about. <clears throat> um, I'm starting off by showing you our latest video. <clears throat> um, it's to really mark um, this new direction that our campaign is taking. Um, so our slogan right now is becoming hope for a post COVID world. Uh, because I think that's what we need right now. People are feeling very burnt out. They're feeling that the government is not hearing us and we need to create hope for the post-COVID world. The sound isn't working, but we're representing hope uh, for families um, because family separation is the face of advocacy main thing. That's what we need to deal with. That's what we need to fix. Hope for love in all different forms of family. Um, and this is where it comes down to our, our major push, hope for a post-COVID world. And we even launched with a brand new <laughs> with a brand new logo made by my beautiful partner, AJ Kino. So uh, that being said, let's talk about what we're actually doing and what we can do uh, moving forward. So uh, forgive me as I'm just struggling with the technology. Um, so first I wanna start uh, with the advocacy letter. Uh, probably every single live that I do, I'm going to talk about how to get the advocacy letter done because this is the singular most important thing you can do in order to actually create change. The advocacy letter can be sent by both the Canadian and non-Canadian family members, but the government is not obligated to respond to the non-Canadian family members. The advocacy letter, uh, we're doing it into a one-click fashion. And what that is, is uh, pressing a button and then you'll be able to send an automatically populated letter. The thing that you have to do is replace your own name, put your own postal code, and add uh, your specific either member of parliament or member of legislative assembly or um, member of, uh, of provincial parliament. So your MPP, your MLA uh, and your MP. So if you have questions about what that is, I'll explain it in a moment. But if you go to facebook.com slash faces of advocacy, uh, you can scroll in uh, and then you can find our post here. Uh, we have what's called the one click advocacy letter, click on it. Depending if you're on your mobile or on your desktop, it'll open up an email. The email will auto-populate uh, to what's put in. You can, uh, we've already put the prime minister, the health minister, the public safety minister, the transport minister. Um, typically add your own subject line because we don't look like robots and have different, you know, the same subject line and everything. Make sure to put in your postal code, make sure to put your name, phone, and your email. And then here, add your MPP, your MP or your MLA, whatever your provincial body uh, person is and possibly your premier as well. And I'll get into why we need to talk about the premiers in the federal section um, as well. If you don't know who your uh, MP is, go to ourcommons.ca. On ourcommons.ca, you can click on members, members of parliament. And this is where you find out who your MP is, your member of parliament, type in your postal code. For me, I'm in Toronto, M5G, M5 Golf. Uh, and that's the Honorable Christia Freeland, who, by the way, looks like she'll be flying in person to the G7 finance ministers uh, meeting, which is why we need to start pressing hard because it is grossly uh, disproportionate to have families suffer so much while those with incredible resources such as our ministers and hockey players be allowed to cross the border much more easy. Now the previous person, Mark Garneau, he went to the G7, he came back and he chose to go into a quarantine hotel. That's not the point. The um, minister Garneau did not have to go into a quarantine hotel. And also we don't know if he paid his own bill. It probably came out of the government's pocket. And so these are the, th the reasons why we're fighting. So uh, that's how you uh, send the advocacy letter, send it over. Uh, we'll be changing it quite often. So I ask you to please like Faces of Advocacy on Facebook, follow our Twitter, follow our Instagram, um, follow our Facebook, follow our YouTube, uh, because we need to keep these advocacy letters pressed uh, into people's inboxes. And then you might be thinking, you know, David, I can't imagine these things actually matter. Well, as discussed earlier, our exemptions uh, were from a letter writing campaign. And I like to highlight some personal stories here. 
So uh, some of you might know uh, John McCall. Uh, he, he's an American whose Canadian wife passed away uh, without being able to say goodbye to her American children. Uh, Donna, uh, when she passed, um, she had to say goodbye uh, through video chat and John McCall is famous for saying FaceTime is not the same. We believe that no family should suffer the way the McCalls have. Now, when, after she passed, we were able to uh, succeed in getting our compassionate and extended family exemptions. What that meant was a person such as Arthur Santiago, whose wife, Sherry, um, had a terminal illness. Uh, originally, she wasn't able to see her family. Um, however, what happened was with the compassionate exemption that the McCalls and the Face of Advocacy and all of us fought for, we were able to get uh, Sherry's sister to come in and say a, a goodbye. Uh, and this is the kind of emotional moment when you see a man who has lost so much and a man who was able to gain something from that loss. These are the emotional touchstones that I think really drive the campaign. And we'll go through other stories, uh, but I think it's very important that we touch on these things. Um, this is the Faces of Advocacy YouTube, and you can see a number of uh, different videos there as well. And I, I want you to please keep that, um, uh, keep that uh, in mind as we move forward. So what are we actually up to? So let me switch out uh, because, and I realize for a lot of you, this is a lot of repeat, but for newcomers, this is why we need to go through things piece by piece because we need a very focused uh, campaign to actually win. So about four or five days ago, uh, an independent government panel put together uh, what is called the priority um, strategy for uh, opening the border essentially. So I'm sorry, priority strategies to optimize testing and quarantine at Canada's borders. So the basic idea of this report is they had a number of well-known um, physicians and scientists. Uh, these are high profile. We have the president of Alberta Health Services. We have uh, the most high profile epidemiologists in Canada all coming together to create a report for the government saying, this is what we should do with our borders, okay? So these are not nobodies. These are, these are not crackpots. These are legitimate people that the government chose to actually give information on the border. This is important because as of today, there is still no acceptance of the recommendations made by this panel by the federal government. What that means is they effectively paid a bunch of people to study something. They, the people who studied something suggested what to do and the government has not acted on it. Now, Minister Haidu and uh, Dr. Tam has said, you know, we'll talk to the provinces about it, we'll make a consensus. Here's where the concern really comes in. Number one, if, I, if we're tracing the uh, elements properly, the government has had this, this document since April the 7th. So that means it's been at least seven weeks. Number two, if they had that preparation, they should have at least had some framework to say, hey, this is our time frame to do something. And then number three, if they cannot commit to opening the border safely for families or for other people, then why on earth is, uh, is the prime minister and the deputy prime minister and our foreign minister, how, why have they all already, uh, why are they going to leave the country and come back? The point is the government is showing uh, that they believe that they think they follow the science, but I'm not entirely convinced they are. And this hypocrisy must be pointed out and that is the importance of selling, of sending out the um, advocacy letters. So um, what does this report say? So um, we have this graphic and I don't know whether or not it actually shows up on the screen. So uh, let me ensure that the share screen is showing this graphic in particular. Uh, it summarizes the, um, it summarizes the elements of what the report actually says. So the basic idea is this. The panel recommends that the hotel quarantine should be gone, period, okay? So the hotel quarantine has a lot of issues. We can talk about another time, but the basic idea is it has to go, okay? That doesn't mean quarantine has to go. It just means the hotel quarantine system is not effective. So people should be able to quarantine at home. The faces of advocacy have been pushing for that since the start for families. The government said, no, we won't give it to families. Uh, you get lumped in with everyone else. And that's why we are pushing for all of these recommendations to be placed because we cannot do it just for families. It has to go for all Canadians. That's precisely why our charter challenge, our legal action against the government of Canada, uh, if we win, uh, and that should be hopefully within the next few weeks, if we win, it'll get rid of the quarantine hotels for everyone, not just families. Now, if you are fully vaccinated and non-exempt, non-exempt means you aren't a government official, you aren't a truck driver, 
whatever you want, a hockey player, apparently. Um, uh, you arrive into Canada, you take a test for tracking purposes. You don't, you don't take it because the result will change anything. You just take it for tracking purposes. And then you do you, you social distance, but you live your life uh, as safely as you can. Okay, so that's a fully vaccinated person. A partially vaccinated person means you had one shot instead of two shots. So you have to do a pre-departure test within 72 hours. You have to fly into Canada on an arrival test. You get it if you're, pos if you're positive, if you have COVID, you will have to quarantine uh, for at least seven days. Um, which I believe is reasonable because you're positive of COVID once you've landed. If you're negative, then you can not quarantine, go live safely, okay? Uh, and then if you're un unvaccinated, uh, you will be doing the same thing that we are to do right now, except you don't have to go to a quarantine hotel. And that saving $2,000 will mean a great deal to a lot of families. Um, and so we are pushing for the government to accept these recommendations that they themselves <laughs> commissioned to exist. Um, so we could twiddle our thumbs and possibly at the end of the summer, these recommendations will be accepted. But quite frankly, families have been separated for a long time and we need to act on this now. That's why the advocacy letter is so important. Um, so anyone watching, anyone just joining us, I beg of you, if you already sent your advocacy letter, find another person in another group, just message them, let them know to follow Faces of Advocacy on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and then have them send the advocacy letter too. We need the buy-in from both the federal government and the provincial government. All of this that I'm showing you here, this, this, this spreadsheet, this chart, that's, that's managed by the federal government. However, for the federal government to actually act on it, they need be okay from the provinces. That's what we ran into last year with our um, with our uh, exemptions, that some of the provinces were not ready to have families reunite. But once we uh, pushed the, prevent the provinces quite hard, uh, we were able to convince the provinces who then were okay with the federal government to allow reunification to occur that way. We'll need to do a similar strategy here. So that's why when you send your advocacy letter, send it to both your premier of your province, as well as your uh, MPP or your MLA. We'll have a list for the Ontario MPPs. And if someone is willing to help us get a list or make it easy for people in other, other provinces, we could love the help because we need to move forward together in organized fashion in order to succeed. Um, so uh, and now some outstanding things that have been coming up. So we're aware that the NHL is currently having a discussion uh, to get their people through. Um, we ran into this last year, it became a great wedge issue for us. Um, I called it a slap shot to our face. Um, but the basic idea is the NHL looks like they'll be allowed to have four national hockey players come into Canada and play. Before we were outraged, this time we're simply saying, look, if hockey players can do it, we should be able to do it too. Um, because the government has already commissioned a body of evidence that says that we can. So we need to keep pressing this. The other thing that we was brought up is that the maritime provinces are considering opening up the uh, board to the US by themselves. Now we've had some discussion on how this is actually feasible. Um, the federal, as far as we can tell, uh, thanks to our chair of law and of legal affairs and Quebecois affairs, um, it looks like the border does not necessarily have is not under the jurisdiction of either the federal or provincial government. As so, as far as we can tell, the as it's as it's been done during COVID, the federal government has has managed the borders uh, for the land and for the air. Um, so we're not sure how singular maritime provinces will actually be opening up the border to the U.S. What we are one, thinking is that this is actually a trial to see what public perception is, and once the singular province opens up to a single American state, the rest of the land border uh, and air borders will follow. Uh, the point is it's public opinion. We need to be out in the media. We need to share our stories. We need to send our advocacy letter because the government must know and our MPs must know and our MPPs and our MLAs, they must all know that we are behind this 100% for safe reunification. Um, all right, let's move on to the next thing here. Um, in terms of uh, how you can help other than sending the uh, advocacy letter, um, if you are able to, uh, I ask you to please follow us on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. Uh, we're all at 
faces of advocacy, faces of advocacy. Uh, this allows us a little bit more social media space for us to actually act. Uh, if you're able to, um, and you don't have to, but if you're able to, uh, please consider donating. Uh, we use it for the campaign. Um, we are at buymeacoffee.com slash faces of advocacy. Um, and every, every dollar helps. Uh, it's been helping us run the campaign as best we can, but if you cannot, it, I completely understand it's all right. I'd like to take a moment now to discuss an element of family unification that we had not been focusing on. Um, and it's something that's really upfront in, in Canada's conscious right now. Um, many of you uh, want to come into Canada. Many of us are Canadians and, and many of us have grown up in this country. And the past few days have highlighted a significant dark past that sometimes we aren't always paying attention to in Canada. And this time it really had a family reunification issue. So what I'm trying to say is, while we have all been focused on getting our family into the country, we must not forget those families who are suffering within it as well. And so we don't talk about other issues other than the border family unification uh, in face of advocacy for the past year. But I think it's time for us to actually start discussing this. So uh, you might've seen this report, um, 215 children were found buried at a former BC residential school. Um, so I'm not an expert of First Nations issues. I will explain it to you as best as I can. Um, and I'm currently seeking out members within face of advocacy who identify as First Nations, Métis or Inuit to actually have a proper discussion on what this means uh, as we make statements. And I, I think it's time for us to really learn. But for those of us who aren't necessarily familiar with this dark point in Canadian history, uh, the Canadian government had erroneously felt that the First Nations people of Canada needed to have uh, a reform and a cultural change to become more what the government of Canada felt was Canadian. So what they did um, uh, was take children and babies away from First Nations families and brought them to locations called residential schools. These schools uh, were rife with physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. And there were many who died in these schools, children. So a few days ago, four days ago, there were unmarked burials of 215 children. And these were family members who were taken away from their families and were never seen again. There's no justice. So for people who want to learn more about this, um, I ask you to look up the Truth and Reconciliation. Um, I'd like you to look up uh, Missing and Murdered uh, Indigenous Women Inquiries in Canada. And if you um, want to see just a few specific things, uh, you can learn about the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society. Uh, they can take your donations. You can learn a little bit more. Um, and then there's a free course that you can get at the University of Alberta. Um, it's Indigenous Canada. You can audit the course and learn more about uh, Indigenous history. I myself am from Saskatchewan. We have the First Nations University of Canada there. Um, and there's a lot for me to learn. Um, I remember I was a teenager when I first met someone who was in a residential school and I did not understand at the time the weight of the travesties and I still have a lot to learn. I think we all do. Um, and I want this to be in the forefront of our mind as I'm confident we will succeed in family reunification. We will get that done. But after that is done, we ha will have built a beautiful, powerful machine to advocate for those who cannot. And I think if we're gonna be continuing focusing on families, we have to focus on the most vulnerable. And it's very important for us to remember those who have been hurt. Uh, and that starts with the First Nations people of Canada, the Métis and the Inuit. Um, so I appreciate you guys hearing me out uh, on this particular section. Let's go into uh, questions and answers. Uh, I'll review the chat. So I'm not entirely sure when the best time is to do these uh, Facebook Lives. I'm thinking at about 6, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, so Toronto time, uh, which will put us at, I think, 4 p.m. Vancouver time. Um, but I think we should be doing these regularly because we have a lot of new people coming in who aren't familiar with, the, with what the campaign is about, but we need everyone's help and we need to work together. Um, so please let me know what you guys think uh, when it comes to the timing of these lives. So on the chat here, I'm just doing a quick scroll to see. Um, 
My husband will be arriving in Canada as a PR. I want to decline the hotel quarantine. I'm assuming he'll be fine. So a number of people have declined the hotel quarantine because the <laughs> fines for the declining are actually lower than some of the hotels. Uh, I personally cannot recommend this because the face of advocacy, uh, we strongly believe that we should follow the rules that are set out even if we grossly disagree with the rules. The reason is this, I know your partner is a permanent resident, um, but we don't know the long-term repercussions of um, not following the rules that were set out during COVID. Maybe it'll just be a fine, uh, maybe it'll just be a couple thousand dollars, but I don't want to have anyone have a mark on their, on their file. Um, so I strongly recommend following the rules that are set out. I cannot make it more clear than that, but I do know that there have been a number of people who have rejected the fine. Um, and there are lots of rumors that they'll get thrown out. I mean, our, we ourselves are in the courts um, over the constitutionality of the hotel quarantine. But until things are in paper, until they are solidified, I do not want to lead anyone in a path that could end up with harm. Um, let's see here. Um, where can I find the advocacy letter? So um, the advocacy letter can be found on facebook.com slash faces of advocacy. It can be found on twitter.com slash faces of advocacy. It can be found on instagram.com slash faces of advocacy. Um, send a message anywhere, anywhere in the faces of advocacy and someone will point you to the advocacy letter. But essentially go to facebook.com slash faces of advocacy, scroll down. Uh, it's our uh, pinned post at the top. Um, right now, it's this week's letter I put with our new uh, logo that my partner made. Uh, and then you click on this little link, tiny URL. If you prefer to copy and paste it, you can just copy and paste it straight here uh, and put it into your email link of choice. What if both parents are fully vaccinated, but kids are too young for vaccinate? Okay, so when it comes to kids, kids, uh, from my understanding, are not under the vaccination rules at all. Like, like the the depend the, the kids can follow the parents wherever they go. Um, so from my so, the question continues: quarantine or no quarantine? Right now, if you're coming into Canada by air, you have to quarantine in a quarantine hotel and then complete your 14 days of quarantine at home. Period. If you're coming in by land, you complete 14 days of quarantine at home. Kid, not kid, vaccinated or not vaccinated. What we're pushing for right now is the recommendations on that image I showed earlier, uh, but uh, we need to get rid, we want to, for the government of Canada to accept the recommendations by the report that they commissioned. Uh, this means that uh, people who are fully vaccinated and partially vaccinated can get out of quarantine and then hotel quarantine will be gone entirely. I'm in perpetual quarantine. I have to travel every couple of weeks. Um, I never get out of this ridiculous science, uh, ridiculous quarantine. Did I mention I'm fully vaccinated since mid-April? Let's follow the science. Yeah, we need to follow the science. Um, the government of Canada has said multiple times to follow the science. So where are they right now? That's what we're pushing for. Send your advocacy letters. We get, we usually do them every week on reunification Thursday. I'm thinking we'll be writing them more often, but please keep your eye out on in short, please like Faces of Advocacy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Easy. Following that, you'll get updates. Um, we also have a Facebook group, which is Faces of Advocacy, um, that you can join to actually have collaborative discussion. Um, uh, hi, David. Same here. I did four, or hi, Davi. I'm sorry. Same here. Did four. Yes. Um, so uh, Damiano was on CBC recently discussing that he is separated from his family because he is a. Um, a person whose work requires him to travel and he is disproportionately affected. The amount of cost that he has to go through just to see his child, his child is incredibly challenging. Is there any way to get more media attention in regards to the fact that these recommendations were summoned by the government and yet the government isn't following them or raising the question of upcoming press conferences? So, I mean, for those of you who are new to the face of advocacy, I mean, I, I am doing my best uh, with the team uh, to actually bring about these issues in the highest profile we can do. So, I, I mean, we, if you go to our YouTube, um, we have uh, my own parliamentary press conference I did last August. Um, uh, like, I was actually there, you know, uh, in media where we're sending out press releases all the time. Um, and sometimes it gets picked up, sometimes it doesn't. So if you guys know a reporter, tell them. If, 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 if you have a story, send it to your local news. Just keep pushing uh, because, 
the faces of advocacy is not me telling people what to do. The faces of advocacy is more like a federation where a bunch of guys with different ideas and we work together for a singular goal. But just saying, you know, David, I think you should go get more media. I'm doing my best. But if you have a contact, if you have a way to get a hold of someone, if you if you know someone, if you have a story, get it out there as best you can, because everything will help. And that's exactly how you succeed. Okay, what happens to those who are unable to get vaccinated? I don't know. Uh, at the moment, those who are unvaccinated, if the recommendations are taken, will be allowed to vac will be allowed to quarantine at home. I wish I had a better solution. I simply don't. I'm pretty at my best guess. Uh, and I rarely speak to you as a physician, um, but my best, but this is me speaking, uh, my best guess as a, as a physician is that once Canada has hit a certain number of immunity, which Justin Trudeau has said is 75% for adults, once we've hit that threshold, very likely, um, they'll be more comfortable with not having people quarantine um, on a negative test for COVID. Um, uh, but right now, we will not forget those who cannot get vaccinated for um, medical reasons, other reasons. We know that many of you cannot get vaccinated. Okay, Caitlin, you're doing an interview for CBC Radio. Um, so anytime you do media, so bring it up very clear at this point, we want the government to accept the recommendations that they commissioned. That, that's, that's simply it. The government says that they'll follow the science, then follow the science. Um, that's, that's really it, that's a take home. If the, any, any media you do, my email is poon at faces of advocacy, poon at faces of advocacy, have them touch back. So maybe if you want, you can talk to the media about your personal story, but I want to be able to push the very important strategic elements we need to do in order to succeed in our campaign. Um, so uh, someone's asking, how can we register our vaccinations if we got vaccinated out of, out of country? That's a very good question. I myself, because I was studying in New York, I got fully vaccinated in New York City. I reached out to Health Canada specifically about this and they said they'll get back to me. Anecdotally, people have told me that you can call the Public Health Agency of Canada, you can tell your GP and people will get it up the chain. I'm not so sure that it's an organized system yet, but tell your, tell your GP at the very least uh, and they, hopefully they'll know how to push it up. But there's, as far as I can tell, and according to Health Canada, there's no organized system for monitoring the number of vaccinations that have occurred outside of the country. Uh, Tennis Canada is looking into exemptions. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, thank you. If my US partner is sending a letter, he is to use my postal code. Um, for a non-Canadian, you're sending the letter just right. I'm the family of this person, a voter in this postal code. Just make sure the postal code's in it. Phrase it however you like. There's no, there's no exact set elements to it. We just need to get letters out. Um, so sure, you know, my partner lives at such and such. I live at such and such. Uh, make sure it's a relevant uh, actual postal code. Thanks, Sydney, for uh, keeping up, I guess. So Sydney is our newest addition to our team. Uh, we have yet to give her a proper uh, title. I will call her the chief copy and pasting officer today. Um, if you live in a border, so Denise says, if you live in a border city, send it to your mayor. Uh, yes, and we had a mayor's letter campaign organized by our director of operations not too long ago, and I think it was very, very effective. <sighs> Unvaccinated kids wouldn't quarantine if their parents are vaccinated. Unvaccinated kids uh, follow whatever recommendations the parents do. So yeah, unvaccinated kids would follow the quarantine that the vaccinated parents do. Okay, so we're wrapping up here today. Uh, I see no more questions in the chat. Uh, please, uh, any groups you're in, post about the faces of advocacy, post about our letter writing campaign. The advocacy letter is the single most important thing we can do in order to enact change right now. So if people are complaining um, and being upset, that's one thing, but if they wanna change something, we need to send those advocacy letters and we need to stay organized and we need to succeed. So for those of you new to the face of advocacy group, you might notice that we reject most of your posts. We have a fantastic admin team. Uh, we have our chief of staff. Um, we reject most posts. Why? Because most posts are not necessarily about what to change. A lot of them are rightfully so the pain that we're enduring, uh, the challenges that we're facing personally. 
And the reason we don't approve them is because we don't want people's feed to get full of things that are not relevant to winning the campaign. We do, however, have a daily mental health thread um, uh, run by Aaron Avenant, to our medical health, our, our mental health officer, and then we also have a daily discussion thread where you can put in um, how you're feeling and talk to the community because we have a wonderful community. So I apologize in advance for very likely having rejected your post. We will continue to reject your post because we are here to win and we must do so in an organized fashion. Uh, please uh, message as many people as you can, go to other groups, talk about the advocacy letter, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn uh, at Faces of Advocacy. Um, and I guess I'll see you probably tomorrow at about 6, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time uh, for the next live. Um, have a wonderful day. See you guys. Yep, just figuring out how to close this. Ah, maybe here. Yeah, that was fun. This is real professional. <laughs> I need a ring light. <laughs>